Hey guys, Spencer here. We're back for another video in the wrench room. Um, I'm pretty much gonna be uh, following up on the video that I posted not too long ago on how um, to pretty much break in your ball diff. Uh, I did a video on how to build it. Um, down low in the description box, I'll put a link um, for you guys that maybe have not seen the video. And of course, for the ones that um, are still waiting for the video that I'm doing now on how to break it in. It's very short, it's easy. Um, I have a wheel wrench to take my tires off. I have the, the wrench, the 2.0 millimeter L wrench to break in the diff, and I'll go through the progression and the steps on how to do that. But first, I wanna hope, I wanna say, hopefully you guys are staying safe, um, healthy out there, um, it, depending on when you're watching this video. But for the ones that are watching Get Current, um, we're all going through something very crazy. Um, sincere, I hope you guys and your family are staying safe and um, trying to stay stay positive during this downtime. Um, I've been kind of enjoying my downtime with a little bit of uh, some video games, uh, wrenching on my cars, doing these videos for you guys. Um, it's all a crazy learning experience for all of us and we're all gonna get past this and I can't wait to race. Um, been going to the track um, outside a little bit, uh, kind of racing my natural stuff and um, doing a little bit of practicing as much as I can, staying uh, socially distanced as much as possible. But at the same time, kind of staying socially active with the people um, that I can get, you know, call or you know, talk to in the meantime. But staying close with some friends and um, in instead of uh, thinking negatively, trying to think positive. Uh, but anyways, enough of the nonsense. Let's get right into the video and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, if you haven't already, please like the video, comment. Um, if you haven't hit the notification bar up top. Um, to see the latest videos that I post, that will be much appreciated. Uh, so let's get right into it. Alrighty, so we're going to get started on breaking in this bad boy. I already have my brand new diff in my car, so if you're on this step or process of uh, breaking in your diff, um, we're pretty much in sync there. So I have my radio on, my car on, and we're going to be starting this, these, process, these few steps that I have, and you're pretty much going to follow along. And it's super easy, it's not overly complicated. Um, and I will go in to describe in more detail as we get started. So the first thing is, um, I like to break in my diff a little bit initially, uh, pretty slowly for the brand new fresh diff, and then we'll kind of get started into a little bit more of a longer process um, with you know tightening it, and breaking it in, and kind of going in from there. So I'm gonna get started here, going slow. <clears throat> So right when you get your diff um, in your car and you kind of go both sides, you don't have to do it for, for very long because the diff has no tension on the spring as it is. Um, it's very little. Um, if you do it a bunch, the, the, the initial part, you kind of blow through the greases that are in there and you kind of, that's the greases are your friend and you don't want to overly burn them up um, on the first initial hit of the, of the um, break-in process. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll actually tighten it quite a bit until I feel a good, a good tension on the spring and the screw. And you'll kind of have that knack of feeling of what I'm talking about. And this could even be something that you kind of just test on your own um, with feeling you know, how tight it actually is. And I'll go probably half a turn, spin the diff, and you can see that it spins quite a bit. And the whole goal of this, um, the flick of the wrist, um, that's funny, the flick of the flick of the wrist, of of what I like to what what I like to see is I have a little mark on my rim. It's a J Concepts little logo, and I'll flick it. And if the logo does a full 360 degrees and lands back in the same spot, that means the diff is that means the diff is tight. Um, or if we, 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 let me go back and say that the diff is broken in properly um, or enough. That's how tight I like to um, break in the diff. Um, it's one full rotation. You can even mark with um, a magic marker on the inside of the rim if you don't have an, the the like a logo on the on the rim itself. So I actually um, did a half turn on the wrench, and I'm gonna go through time breaking in probably 15 or 30 seconds after the first um, break in process.
So still it got loose again, which means it's breaking in nice and uh, smooth. And that, like what I just did, going back and forth on the radio, tightening the diff, should really only take four or five rounds of doing until you should feel that the diff is, is in a pretty good spot of where it should be as far as how broken in it is. If it's not, that means you're not tightening the diff enough um, when you're going in and tightening it. If you have to take the tire off, take the ball stud off and then tighten it, or if you do have an L wrench, you're not tightening it, if, tightening it enough um, so it, like I said, you don't want to do the the tight tightening break in tightening break in, breaking in a lot because that pretty much blows through the grease and burns it up, and you don't want that. You want it to really kind of do it as you know smooth and slowly as possible, but make sure you're you're kind of keeping up with you know how broken in the the, um, the rings and balls are together uh, to give it a good sink and eye sink and eyes as far as you know how smooth the diff. Will react when it's done if you go back and forth a bunch if you're just tightening it really slow to me the, the ball diff doesn't last that long and it feels super dry um, which is something that I get asked a lot with and checking people's diffs at the track and that's something that I commonly feel when I feel people's diffs is it feels dry and gritty that's because people go through too many times of breaking in the diff it should only take four or five times at least the way I that I do it so we're gonna go in the diff. I can definitely feel it got tighter. And what I like to doing, what I like doing, is like putting the wrench in the out drive, putting on my sub trim on, on my radio, um, to a pretty slow, consistent speed, um, to kind of let let the motor do its own magic to the diff, and it's just a, con a consistent speed, uh, which makes things a little bit easier on myself and not giving it too much gas. I'll do that about 15, 20 seconds on one side, then I'll swap over. And then we'll repeat the same process one or two more times. checking the diff it's still not quite broken in enough which is totally fine this is only the second or third time that we did this so we're going break it in one more time see where it's at I can definitely feel that time that the spring and the screw were getting uh, physically tighter I can kind of feel the tension on the um, the nut side um, on how tight it's getting so now that you kind of feel you can kind of feel some tension and you can feel that there is some good tension there. We're gonna let it break in probably a little bit longer, 45 seconds on one side now. At a slow, consistent speed for the, through the sub trim. Can't even get a haircut during this time. My hair is getting so long. Sides. Slow down the sub trim. See, to me, this right here is perfect. I hold the spur gear and I flick the tire, and it's one rotation uh, for where I have it marked. And that's something that, um, that's kind of where I normally set my ball diffs at. Um, for those who are asking or thinking of, um, does it matter if, if there's different traction from track to track, do I adjust differently from different traction levels? Uh, typically, no, I don't. Um, I guess you could say if the track's really loose, then you could run a little bit looser of a diff, but sometimes you kind of get a little bit, um, you're kind of pushing, pushing the, the door a little bit if your diff will start to bark. And that was pretty much the last process I was, I was gonna show you, um, is 
you'll know if your diff's too loose if it barks and you'll hear the the slipper and the diff do its own different action but if you hear the normal slipper sound which is this that means your diff is plenty tight enough and it won't bark or skip um, and destroy your diff if you if it does bark it's not initially a bad thing but if you continue to let it bark um, because the diff is too loose it will destroy your diff and it will you'll lose um, the smoothness of how built how you built it and it just won't last that long you just start seeing issues with traction be inconsistent to drive and it's kind of like a rabbit hole you don't want to go down uh, but it's not that big of a deal if you if you check the slipper and it does bark once or maybe twice then I would say you're fine I wouldn't say don't worry don't sweat it you don't you don't have to buy a new diff um, uh, but if you feel like that you did destroy your diff or there's an issue, then you can go ahead and flip the rings, the bigger, the big diff rings in the diff, and then you can kind of reuse those and then buy a, like a different thrust kit, um, which, you know, are like, you know, seven or eight bucks. Uh, but other than that, I pretty much think I covered everything. Um, it's not that big of a deal of a process to do. Some make it seem like it's really hard or difficult. Um, like I said, four or five times breaking it in back and forth. If it takes you a little bit longer than that, that means you're not tightening the screw enough. Um, and then going through the process of each side back and forth and not overdoing the break-in action to wear out or, you know, water down the greases. Um, but I think we've pretty much, I covered everything. If you guys have any questions that I may left that I may have left out, please add them in the comments below. Um, I kind of go through and I'll, I'll answer anybody's questions that you may have. Um, I think I, I pretty much covered everything. So um, other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video, comment, like I said, and um, subscribe if you haven't already. And um, I've kind of been noticing some people have been um, you know, using the notification bell up top in the top left or right corner. I don't know which way it is for you, but um, it kind of gives you guys um, a notification on when I post my latest videos, keeps you guys up to date and um which gives you guys something to do during this down period so anyways thank you guys for watching uh please stay safe out there and then healthy stay positive stay active and uh, until then we'll see you on the next one